So we always think, you know, we work in the Pessoa rig or drawings on the lunge or whatever like that. It's like, ooh, they're developing such good habits and correct musculature. And then you get on them and you discover you have to train it anyway. Because the draw range of the Pessoa rig simply limits their possibilities. And so they decide that that possibility is the least obnoxious of the possibles or the least onerous of the possibles. So our dilemma when we get on them is we still have to have an aid system. We still have to have something that says, put your head down, bring your withers up, get your back up, get your leg underneath you, go over the top line. And unfortunately, and you know the, the difference, the head down isn't the only answer. It's part of the answer. It's not the only answer. And then change rain. And this is kind of a catch-22 with this horse because as he is he's getting a larger range of motion, <coughs> When he makes funny steps, they look weirder. Yes, they do. Like, darn it. I'm developing an athlete, and he looks weirder at times. <coughs> so, great. More scope, also more range to look on level at times. Good boy. Nope. But considering he used to be an evaporator, he's much better than he was. And not easy with his confirmation, but at least beginning to look more possible. And then at some point, circle or not your options, step him hopefully from this trot to left lead canter. Well, it helps if he doesn't trip himself, poor guy. <coughs> Gotta watch out for that killer fly spray to really get you. Oh, my allergies have just kicked in bad. So, your gratitude is, it was a nice big trot. You should have been able to step into that canter without habit. Oh, well, there's still habit then, dear. So, it's... Pretty good rhythm with your hand, and I'm a little surprised his nose is going in circles. Because normally, when the hand moves that well, both of them, they oscillate over their top line correctly, and they don't do wiggle waggles with their nose. But if he's still rigid on the left rein, we're not surprised. Good boy. Actually, I feel like he's rigid on the right rein. Oh, right. Have you, has he swapped sides, or has he always been that way? I don't know. Oh, okay. Big circle and forward to trot. That was very nice. Good boy. Change rein, and then when you're ready, right lead canter. Mm-hmm. Changing flexion. Mm-hmm. You see that? It's like every time I change direction, it's like, like you can't do it right. So you ask yourself, is it a physical issue, like chiropractic issue, or is it that, heaven forbid, could I have a headset? Because when you have a headset, that change of flexion just does not work. So if he isn't basculing over the top line, if he's simply lowering his head, you know, like a Western pleasure horse, and not actually using correct longitudinous dorsi and the other muscles that we need him to use on his top line, when you try to change flexion, it will be like popping the clutch. If it only happens one direction, we're a bit more inclined to think it's his asymmetry. So what I would try doing, go forward to trot again, and go off and do a number of changes of direction and trot once he settles into trot. I would try putting his pole down a little bit when that doesn't work, I'd put his pole up a little bit and see if there's a place in there where you are allowed that change of flexion. And I would also think in terms, it's twofold, 
I ask with a new inside rein, but I also push the outside ear forward a bit. Because some of them are just habitual. I can't turn my nose there because the outside rein restricts me. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, yes, it does, according to him, at least psychologically. And then if you say it only happens on right to left, you're like, or left to right, you say, oh, well, hmm, let me see what I can, how I can change his mind about this. Because the impression is right to left, it just doesn't change flexion very much. On left to right, the impression is he lifts into the left rein contact. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can say it's like, this is a lifelong project because the horse is relatively uneducated on one side of his face or he perceives restriction is going to happen or the muscles on that side of his body aren't long enough. You know, you can come blah, 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 blah. But if he's correctly bridging over the top line and you have to do some experimenting, does he need to be lower in the pole? He is croup high. And we know that, I mean, this is not as high as he has been in the past, but sometimes he just gets himself in a place where there is no way he can change flexion because it's blocked by the musculature. So this may be a time when you're like, oh, I almost need Rolker, briefly. And you say, well, let me see if I do ex ask you extra round, deep and curly, if I can change flexions. And then we say, let's hope we don't have to state it forever. But extra round, deep and curly rolker is not a loose rein. Yeah. Because you don't want to surprise him when you change flexion by suddenly establishing contact. And obviously, if he gets his chin too tight to his chest, he's not going to be able to change. So we're assuming that teeth and all that stuff have been checked out. And then you say, how much of this is habit, dear? Mm-hmm, I agree. Because if I can't go counterflexion to true flexion on a circle, I need to sort this out. Because counterflexion to true flexion on a circle is much more likely to get the top line operating correctly. And if I can do that on a circle, then there's a remote chance I might actually be able to change bend and go to another circle. But if I can't go counterflexion to true circle, to flexion on a circle, then I may indeed have a headset or I have habitual resistance or whatever you want to call it, habit, until I can figure out how to push the outside ear longer into the new inside flexion. That was good at least better. So spend some time on your right-hand circle with the counterflexion going, I'm allowed to do this. And you can think of this as access to left fore, left girth. My frontal plane turns around the circle. And you got to figure this out, horse. This counterflexion has two reins. It's not just the left rein. Because I don't want to surprise you when I touch the right rein and decide to make right flexion. Exactly. And it's always interesting. It's kind of like peeling away the layers of an onion. You say, oh my God, he's not very submissive. He's not very broke. Is it because it hasn't occurred to him that he has, and I'm not sure if it's actual a conscious thing or not, but the ability to hold himself over his top line and allow you to, to direct where his nose is? We think of this, well, this should happen fairly early in their life. Well, he had a very checkered early life. So we do see definition on each side of the windpipe all the way back to the chest. That's good. And occasionally we see the big muscle that parallels the crest midpoint back to withers, but we don't see that very often. And that's the one that's going to allow you, although it's not logical to a human, to be able to rotate that flexion because up until that time we can say he doesn't hold the left flexion of his own, on his own muscles. He only holds it because you hold it. 
if he'll hold it on his own muscles, and I'm not talking a looping rein, I'm talking a light contact, I should be able then to push it around to right flexion. And if you get from counter to straight, and it's straight, anything beyond straight to right, he pokes his head back up in the air, you're like, I, I really don't think you allow me to ride the geometry of the circle off my seat and leg. I think you think you need your reins. You don't need your reins. Your reins are just controlling which way your nose is pointed, literally. Mm-hmm. So the ability, and he has to figure this out, for you to ride the shape or the size of the figure off seat and leg in frontal plane, and then to be able to twirl his nose about at will, well, it's only two degrees left and right, it's not much. It's really a big deal to him. Trot looks better. And then the question is always, well, when do I try the right flexion? Well, there's no good answer. Sometimes